nation. We will celebrate the victory that God has given to Daniel. We will also celebrate the years that God gave us to have Daniel with us. But at the same time, we will be mourning the fact that we are not together. And I don't know how we will be able to mix up those different emotions. But with God's grace, we will be able to do that through this period, even to the interment and thereafter. And our prayer is that God will help us to do that. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are gathered in this place in your name, persuaded that your word is true, that those who rest in the Lord are not lost, but they have come to be with you. And Father, it is our understanding that Brian knew you as Lord and Savior, and consequently we commit ourselves to you to be able dear Lord to process the loss that has occurred to us but the gain that has been received for eternity in heaven I take this time to ask you Lord that you will be with us in this service from the beginning to the end we pray that every word that will be said will be guided of you. We pray even the word that will be spoken will speak to our hearts and to our minds and to our spirits. We invite the presence of your Holy Spirit who is able to do what no man can do. And we believe that you have heard our prayer and you will grant it. Be with us now. And we ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. God bless you. We may be seated. Great. Thank you, Senior Pastor. Uh, the worship team will lead us in one more hymn, uh, and then we'll proceed from there. Just in case it's your first time here in Sitam Valley Road, you're visiting with us, we want to welcome you. We are glad to have you on behalf of the family. Thank you for coming to condole with them in case you may need to access the places of convenience um, if you exit through this door on my right which is your left and just stand that way along the wall you'll be able to find the ladies and gents properly labeled um, for your access and convenience and yes we are in God's house but we also would like to ask you to just be watchful um, of your property and the Lord will be with us to the very end once again, Karibuni Sana, my name is Precious Cole. I serve as a pastor here in Sitam Valley Road, and I will be moderating this service. Let me request us one more time to just rise up for a hymn, and then we'll be moving on with the rest of our program. Thank you. Chakutu maini sina Iladamu ya kebwana Sina wemba wakutosha Thambi zangu kuzi osha Chakutu maini sina Iladamu ya
family why don't you just make mention of them in prayer and pray that God will give comfort that he does in Jesus name Lord we thank you your word tells us it's better to be in the house of mourning and today Lord we are in that environment and we ask of your grace we ask of your peace oh Lord that covers all human understanding thank you because Lord in our weakness your strength is made perfect we are grateful for the promise of the Holy Spirit who is also our helper and we are encouraged and comforted by his presence amongst us this morning so we thank you for our time together in Jesus name we pray amen and amen if you don't mind just help me appreciate the Lord as you have your seat thank you thank you very much uh, we would like to move on to the rest, to the next part of our program. I'd like to invite Rhoda and Linda, um, who will be doing the scripture reading for today. Uh, Rhoda and Linda are here with us. Uh, if you just encourage them with a clap, that would be wonderful. Um, yes, they will be reading for us the two scriptures, and we will move on from there. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good morning. Uh, my name is Rhoda. This is Linda, big sister, firstborn. Uh, Rhoda, Daniel's small sister. I shall be reading from Ecclesiastes, Chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. 
a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. That's the word of God. Amen. Thank you very much, Rhoda and Linda. Do we want to just appreciate them? Thank you. It is encouraging. We would like to hear some brief tributes from selected members um, of our congregation who will represent different groups. And so on behalf of uh, friends to the family, let me bring to the podium Dorothy Otieno. Um, Dorothy, if you're here, we would be happy to have you join us. And also on behalf of the aunties, um, Penina Cheruiyot. Um, if I could have the two of you coming. Yes. Yes, 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 please come. This is Penina Cheruiyot. Yes. Is Dorothy around? Uh, Karibu sana, please come. Yes, they will be giving us tributes on behalf of those two groups. And let me ask Brian Ayugi to be ready on standby. You will be coming right after uh, these two. Please go on. Thank you. Praise God, church. As you have heard, my name is Penina. And I am dance auntie. And on behalf of my family and also other aunties. I'm here to say pole to the entire family of Reverend Omenya. I, Penina, knew Dan better after he had completed his Form 4. That is when I met and not I met, but we started knowing one another better. And in Dan, there was a gentle soul. Dan was very loving. Dan was cool. Cool but firm in what he may want to do. And Dan did not mind other people's business. He was focused on what he wanted to do. And in my world with Dan, we shared some two, some two areas of life which made us bond more and more. Dan liked to be updated with current affairs. He really loved current affairs. Dan also loved the Premier League, which I know most Kenyans love the Premier League. So each and every time our, our talk was focusing on the current life and most likely the political scene that kept on changing in this nation each and every time. And for the Premier League, Dan and me, we met at Arsenal. <laughs> and that's where we enjoyed more than even the politics. That I was surprised that when Dan was in HDU, when I went to visit him, and the mother was there, there to coward, I heard him say, Mama, ebu toka inje nyonge na anti. And the mama agreed, obeyed. Even me, I was I wondering, what does he want to tell me in the world? Do you know what Dan said? See, we can't ask no Necheza na Manchester. You know now the construction went and on and on. He wanted to dissect, ask me and him to dissect the match without the mom. Because he knows the areas of interest of the mom and my areas of interest. 
Now, that was done for you. Then, also had another thing which I loved. He went through many battles, uh, you will be told, but Dan had the spirit of encouragement. Yani, instead of you encouraging him, Dan was encouraging himself. That you are left now, what am I, what am I going to tell him? After he, he's the one who has encouraged himself through all the battles he faced until the very end. And that was a spirit where we can say as believers, he fought the fight. And even at the end, Dan was still fighting. But as our dear pastor here said, God knows the best. I will talk about the sisters and I will say, Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Rhoda. You have given your all, all the love that you have for your brother. And he knows even where he is. He knows that you loved him. And me as your auntie, nimewapenda sana. Sana, sana. Eh? You have done it beyond what I could have even expected. Lastly, my dear sister, I leave you with this, with this hymn. You know it that I love it, which says only two, only two sentences, not verses, sentences. Through all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in joy, that song says the next stanza, we shall still praise the Lord. Today, we can say we are in that part, in trouble, in the storm. But we know that when we praise the Lord, and that's why we are all here. Otherwise, why are we in the Lord's sanctuary? Because now that trouble, let us now put it away, because the Lord says we shall still praise him. And... I say to all, all of you, may God's grace sustain you all, and may his peace be with you. And before I forget, Dan had a contagious smile. Yes, a smile that made the place look, you know, yani una fraia, yo smile ya Dan, even this year, I didn't want to forget that. Asanteni. <laughs> My name is Dorothy Otieno, and I thank the Lord for this morning. I want to say, Paul, for Reverend and Mrs. Omenia, these are our long time friends, and not just long time friends. Prayer partners, me and Judy, if there's anything, we can remember Judy and Reverend Omenia for. <clears throat> it's praying when things are working out well for us and when things are not working out well for us. And we have been praying for Dan in good and bad situations. And when Judy called me one day and told me Dan, was admitted. I, I prayed. And any time she called me, she would ask me, Dorothy, can we pray together or you are busy? Can we, are you in a place we can talk? She always asked like that. And then we pray. Sometimes we do it online. And uh, I remember when Dan was sick, we went to see him several times. I think I went there like four or five times. And the last time before Dan was taken to ICU, it was on a Saturday, we went with my husband, the cliff. Dan was very strong. We were at the point of death and we did not know and we did not even see death coming. We believed 
with the family. They were very strong and they were always there for Dan. Any time I went there, I was with Linda and uh, Rhoda and Mama. They were always asking for prayers and even reverent, they were always asking for prayers. And I was challenged even on, th on Saturday when Reverend Omenia came to Lem the Luo on Saturday and I was like, God, when things are not working out like this, Reverend could still come and praise the Lord and pray with us and he was not in a hurry and Dan was in the ICU. They were waiting for him to go back, but he was, there was that a calm assurance in him. He was very calm and I was really challenged and I was asking myself, this Muse is here and Dan is in the ICU. He was not disturbed because he knew and he knows the God is serving. And we thank God for the strength. We prayed, we fasted for Dan, but God deemed it fit to take Dan away from us. All the glory still goes back to God because in good or bad times, we still give him thanks and glory. Our hearts are heavy. There's nothing we can do, but we are challenged. I'm really challenged this family because this family, they love God and we'll still continue praying together. We'll still walk with you in this journey until the end, until the end, and we'll still be praising the Lord because things were out of hands and Dan was still talking and saying, I'm strong and I know I will live again. And I was challenged when Dan was asking me about my sister-in-law who, who was sick and admitted at the same time. And when we went there, he told us, how is Judy and I'm wishing him quick recovery and I know I will come out of this hospital. That was our prayer. But things change. Even, even if we have our heavy hearts, we still ask the Lord that Dan may rest in perfect peace and give the family peace. In Philippians 1.21 says that for me to live is to Christ and to die is to gain. So we thank the Lord this morning with our heavy hearts. But I say, Paul, Say, Paul, to the family, it was not easy for me when Judy told me to talk about Dan today, but I want to thank the Lord that God, Dan fought a good fight. And the family also fought a good fight. They were always there and praying. They were only asking for prayers, not anything else. No support. Their support was only God. They asked for prayers. So we should learn to ask for prayers always when we are in good or bad times, because God is still God even at this particular time and we glorify the name of the Lord this morning. And I ask for peace and strength for the family. May the good Lord and may the good hand of the Lord be upon you always as we continue with the journey. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, aunties uh, Dorothy and Penina. God bless you. Uh, Brian Ayugi, please, if you would uh, come up, we'll be happy. Um, let me also have a representative from Kenya Institute uh, for the Blind, uh, Mr. Lazarus Omusula. Are you here with us? Uh, Karibu sana. Please come. Um, yeah, you can be guided to come and take a seat here. Yes. Karibu sana to share your tribute. Yes. Um, Saints of the Most High, good morning. Good morning. Um, Reverend and uh, your leadership and uh, my fellow mourners want to thank you for this opportunity that you have uh, sacrificed and uh, just come through your love for my brother Dan. Um, my name is Brian Ayugi, um, a cousin to Dan. Um, my um, aunt Penina <laughs> You stole my script. <laughs> but I, I thank God. Um, it shows that uh, we are a strong family. And uh, what you shared is exactly what I wanted to share. But uh, of course, I will add. Um, um, I'll just share two incidences. Um, 
when Dan was at game, we come from game, an area in um, Malira, Sierra County. Um, we, we one day visited with him, and uh, he was like, I was myself, my mom, my dad, and uh, the parents. And uh, Dan was like, uh, Brayu, I go come. Um, you want to, let's talk. I was like, eh, okay. Um, so he pulled me aside, we went outside, showed me his Simba, showed me around, uh, he was able just to identify some of the activities um, they handle back at home. And uh, uh, that's when it dawned on me that it's not the inability in someone's um, health or capability, but I could see the passion and zeal Dan had. He, I could try and imagine um, if he was able to identify the color of that a certain plant, whether it was yellow or red. He, was, he could try his best, level best, and from this I really learned a lot. Dan was a very humble man, very humble. He wanted to make everyone comfortable and happy, including <laughs> on his hospital bed. I, I was like, you know, um, um, Whenever I used to visit, I was like, how, 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 how do I conduct myself? Yeah? Do I sing? Um, do I break jokes? Because we, we used to joke with Dan. Um, do I preach? Yeah? So I was, uh, I was, uh, I was uh, uh, divided. But uh, himself is one, is one was encouraging me. And what uh, he used to encourage me with is, uh, um, he used to tell, he, he, he used to ask me, how is you, how is Chako? Chako is my son, and Hera is my daughter. How is Chako and Hera? These are people that Dan has never seen in his life. But through the memories that we used to share, yeah, and of course talk on phone, they used to they used to have some good time on phone, um, and it was so not so easy for me to explain, even to my children, that uh, uh, Dan is in hospital. I remember at some point we visited the children, and of course they're not allowed, they're not permitted to get inside. So they just managed to reach by the door, and uh, that's where they were able to. But uh, in all this, my children have been praying for Dan. Um, sorry, trying to explain death to a young one, it's never easy. They were all looking up. I, I assured them that we are going to visit with Uncle Dan um, as soon as he's going to be discharged. And they even planned a Thanksgiving cake for Uncle Dan, but to their disappointment. <laughs> it's to their disappointment, but in all in all, we thank God uh, uh, this far, this far um, uh, he has uh, brought us. It's a learning curve for me um, that anyway uh, thank you. Thank you for coming and may God bless you and let's continue praying with the family.
Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I hope I'm facing the right direction. <laughs> I know we are in a, a somber mood, and um, I just would want to introduce myself. Um, I am Lazarus Omusula. Um, coming in to represent uh, the Kenya Institute for the Blind Community. And uh, maybe before I go far, I'll just have asked uh, our colleagues, I don't know which direction you are, but I hope you're somewhere. We have three of us somewhere. Uh, Eddie, uh, Hassan, uh, Eddie, Owino, and uh, Duncan, if they're on their feet. Yes, we just clap for them, we appreciate them. Uh, thank you. Uh, we, the two, uh, Eddie and uh, Hassan, are uh, uh, teachers to the late uh, Dan. And uh, Duncan um, is a, a schoolmate. Uh, and so therefore, even before I just continue to speak, I am not able to see you, uh, not because uh, I refuse to see, but the eyes did their own story. And it is good to know that sometime life, life will do us in. And uh, I know we met Dan, uh, because uh, to those of us who might not know, Dan has struggled with visual impairment, and that's how he was brought over to Kenya Institute for the Blind. And uh, at that institution, we were very hopeful of uh, helping Dan to bounce back into life. After what uh, life had uh, done to his sight. But here we are. Uh, we do not know what to say, but uh, we can only thank God, as a uh, uh, pastor put it, that it is mixed emotions. We wonder what to, to do, but the bottom line is we thank God we had time with uh, Dan. Uh, so from um, Kenya Institute for the Blind, about Dan was that Dan was doing very well. Actually, he was supposed to have uh, <coughs> graduated himself, but because other than being visually impaired or blind, he still had conditions. Dan kept fighting just to try and manage the other conditions. He had actually studied Braille. He had studied how to use the white cane to find his way. Dan was also, he had actually learned how to use his phone. And uh, I like his spiritual background. We have a, a fellowship at the institution. Dan always used to come and uh, be party to that um, fellowship. And by all means, I am sure that Dan is resting in the Lord. Uh, Dan, like I've had, the aunties say, those who have mentioned before me, Dan was a guy, he was just cool, he was just calm with his stories. Dan will rarely get into conflict with anybody. And most of the time, uh, or this, like some people would call him, would avoid a trouble. Uh, I think I was telling my colleagues uh, at some point when I was in class, he got into a conflict with a classmate and they did a bit of exchange of words and I walked out with Dan 
And then, like I had uh, the auntie say, uh, I didn't know he had uh, that uh, the smile because I can't see smiles. Uh, but <laughs> Dad, Dan had, you know, he, he would, uh, you know, uh, laugh back. He would, tss, 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 he would laugh, laugh. Then, when we stepped out, Dan laughed a bit, a gig, and he told me, Teacher Lazarus, I, I know some words have come out of my mouth that shouldn't have done so. And he told me, I'm very sorry, uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, I, I just, I'm sorry about that. So Dan was quick to also seek uh, out uh, apology where he found himself on the wrong side of life. Because we, we also have to know sometimes we are vulnerable human beings, and Dan demonstrated that he would be remorseful when he found himself on the wrong side. Uh, otherwise, Dan was a strong fighter, and to us who are left uh, alive, we should pick lessons from the fighting Dan has done. Uh, actually, when we were with Dan at school, Dan told me that, you know, if he sat down for long, I don't know, his joints would have issues. So from time to time, you will find Dan would rise up with his white cane, and sometimes he would keep going around the class, just walking, sometimes going around the building, and, you know, I, I asked him at some point what it is, and, and, and he told me, but without giving much details, he was like, no, I will be fine. And of course, to the family, uh, let me just encourage us that the family, you have done your level best. Dan has passed on in a hospital. He was not at home. Dan was warmly covered. Whatever humanly you, are, you could, anybody would need, you did. And so therefore, as much as we will feel bad that Dan has left us, God has enabled that we were able to stand with one of our own. I never heard Dan complain of anything. Dan was just a cool guy. And may we who are remaining alive learn that life has got different seasons like the scriptures told us. But as we go through the morning, we encourage ourselves as in First Thessalonians 4:13, that we don't mourn like the world does. Because when I lost my sight, I also have gone through those grieving and mixed emotions. And life can delve us a blow, and we can never tell where we land. But if we are alive, let's just learn to appreciate God. So to the family, once again from Kenya Institute for the Blind, Stay encouraged in the Lord. And also remember, at Kenya Institute for the Blind, we take in people like Dan. And we also have very heavy uh, times at our school. And how we even just uh, pray that when you can, please pay us a visit. Come and just spend time. W what we need as human beings is just fellowship one with another. And so therefore, as brethren, let's continue just to be encouraged in the Lord even as we mourn the resting of our brother. Otherwise, God bless all of us and let's find time because grieving will start even as we continue to deal with the funeral. Let's not abandon the family. Let's make sure we continue to comfort one with another. Otherwise, God bless us so much and thank you for your time with us as St. Denis. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Let's appreciate Lazarus. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Um, and uh, finally, we would like to welcome our brother Zadok Isabwa, um, who is part of their safari group. Um, for those that are not members of Sitama Safari Group, it's just a small Bible study fellowship or community within the places of residence. He will speak on behalf of their safari groups and also on behalf of our communities here at Sitam Valley Road, Karibu. And praise the Lord. Yes. Um, 
like you've been told, my name is Zado Kisabwa. Um, I'm standing here on behalf of the neighborhood where our elder has resided for quite a long time before he got out of the city. That is Balozi Estate in South B. And our safari group for the area, uh, as we referred to them those days, our Bible study group, which uh, Elder Omenya and uh, Sister Judith are pioneers of. Uh, actually, when we began, we used to be two families. It was Elder, <laughs> Sister Judith, my wife Josephine, across there, and myself. Uh, over time, we had people come in and go, come in and go, so they would come, we get excited, they go, we are left, the two families again, but we thank God. Uh, God has helped us, we have grown, and now we have uh, a, a bigger number. And more so very exciting because now we have a, a number of young people now who have joined our group, including young pastors. You can see Pastor Nicholas in the house there. And a team uh, behind there, I see Noshin, Petwa, part of our group of young people who have joined us. And Elder still uh, attends our safari group meetings, even though he's in the diaspora. <laughs> and we are there for part of this family. The family's loss is there for our loss. And uh, we're just here to stand with the family and to encourage them, uh, even as they go through this, this moment. We have um, grieved and, and, and prayed and, you know, done all that we could do. And even as I was asked to speak on behalf of the neighborhood and the group today, uh, I was lost as what to say. But uh, we encourage ourselves, and like Job in Job 1.20, we just say, the Lord has given, and the Lord himself has taken. And so praise be to his name. And so talking about Dan again, I struggled. I didn't know what to say about Dan. Um, so I spoke to a couple of people in our neighborhood uh, just to help me put together the memories that we have of Dan. And they had very few words. Um, what came out was that Dan was a polite and a respectful young man. I was reminded he would never pass you when he met you in the estate, he would never pass you without saying hello. And then my wife added with a smile. Uh, I struggled a little, I didn't know why I had missed out the smile. Then I remembered some of us can have stone faces that don't encourage smiles. And uh, my wife uh, pays more attention to detail. And I've had that echoed here that Dan had uh, that smile on always. I also spoke to the younger generation. I couldn't get many of them. So I spoke to one in my house. All of them were born. Um, they're younger than Dan. So I tried to ask them, what do they remember about Dan? Uh, two of them are, are too young. They don't remember anything. But one gave me just two words. It says, Dan was nice and gentle. He was nice and gentle. So maybe you ask me, what about you? What do you say about Dan? For me, Dan was that no maneno young man. Just pretty cool, calm, and collected. I've even wondered if Dan ever got into those scenarios, those situations that we often have our young boys get involved in those fights in the estate and those kind of things. I've wondered if Dan ever got into that because he was very calm every time you met him and, and looked like, you know, he knew what he was doing 
and pretty minding his own business. And so I doubt that you would find him in a place of trouble. Uh, as a young man, if he did that, probably the parents would know better. I think by the time I met him, if he ever was cheeky, uh, maybe he had outgrown it. But he was a fine young man. So as, as a, uh, an SG group, as a neighborhood, we have lost a fine young man. Like I've said, polite, respectful, nice, gentle, pretty cool, calm, and collected. And so as we remember him, um, we just surrender to God's will. And to Elder, to my sister Judith, the girls, Linda and Rhoda, I just want to encourage you. God says in Psalms 34 verse 18, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. That is the place you find yourself. God says he is near you. And in Revelations 21 verse 4, the word of God says he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. This is our hope as believers. And we just want to encourage you to stand on the promises of God. Because he who has promised is faithful. Amen. Thank you, Brother Zadok. God bless you. Asante Sana for those of us that may not have had the opportunity to interact at a personal level with Dan. We would like to give you the privilege of hearing about his life story and to help bring that to our attention is our good friend, Mr. Sam Ombogo, who will come and just uh, give us the eulogy of our departed brother and friend and then we will proceed from there. If you don't mind, help me appreciate him as he comes. Thank you. Uh, praise God. Good afternoon, church. Uh, my name is Sami Mbogo. I'll be able to read to you uh, Dan's uh, eulogy. Daniel Obiambo Omenya was born on the 8th of September, 19. 81 to Reverend Winston and Judith Omenya. He was a second born in a family of three children. His siblings are Linda and Rhoda Omenya. Daniel, fondly referred to as Dan, began his primary schooling at Placeview Primary School in Nairobi, South B. He then went to Highway Secondary School and later joined Kenyatta University. On completion of his university education, he worked with Kenya Airways until 2020, 2012 when unfortunately he was among the 400 staff who were laid off. As fate would have it, it was also at this time when Dan contracted glaucoma, rendering him visually impaired. Since 2023, <coughs> sorry, Dan had been enrolled at the Kenya Institute of, for the Blind to learn how to navigate life. Dan medical background. On the 24th March 2024, Dan was at home resting while he started complaining of acute pain in his left leg. So bad that he could not walk or sit or find a comfortable position. He was rushed to Aga Khan Hospital where he was given instant pain relief medicine uh, while his vitals were also observed. His blood pressure was high and his oxygen levels were low, prompting his admission. His leg was still in acute pain, despite the medicine given. He was put on oxygen and mild blood pressure medicine while he underwent a myriad of tests. The initial diagnosis by the doctors was something to do with his autoimmune system, based on the many separate symptoms he had. His oxygen saturation level did not improve satisfactorily, prompting the doctors to recommend his admission to HDU for close monitoring. Here, he was given a myriad of treatments, including steroids to help deal with the pain in his leg, which had subsided, and he had even begun walking the HDU hallways with the help from the physiotherapist. He also underwent uh, 
sinus test from which the doctors confirmed that he has an autoimmune disease that causes infl inflammation of the body vessels. In Dan's case, it had affected his uh, sinuses, skin, lungs, and kidney. On the 6th of April, Dan mentioned during the day that he was having trouble breathing. He was exerting a lot of energy and still not getting enough oxygen. His oxygen mask was changed to provide him with more oxygen, but it was still not adequate. He had to be uh, sedated and intubated so that he could be put on ventilator. He had been in the ICU since then. His lungs were bleeding and his kidneys were also not functioning at optimum levels. He had been undergoing two specific procedures to boost his blood to counter the antibodies attacking his healthy cells. He then went to be the Lord on the Sunday morning, April 14th, 2024. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name. Blessed be his holy name. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sam. Indeed, we stand in the words of the psalmist that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Amen. And we believe that there is life after this storm. I would like at this point to humbly request our elder, uh, together with your dear wife, um, if you would come, if there's someone helping them, um, and just talk to us. In a moment, we will be happy to hear from you. If you don't mind, why don't we encourage them with a clap? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Karibu sana. My name is uh, Reverend Winston Omenya, Dan's dad. I greet, I greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Your amen is so weak. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Yeah, that's what I expect. Hallelujah. Amen. Good. My wife, will you say something? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, I want to thank the Lord for this day. Uh, when this happened, one of the sisters that we served with in Holy Communion Ministry, because that was my best ministry that I served the Lord in in this church, told me that she cannot believe that this is happening to me. And she was very right. I myself, I cannot believe that I am standing here to speak on behalf of my son, Daniel, that I loved so much. I cannot just imagine that this has happened to me. But I want to thank the Lord because he has told us that in everything we should give thanks because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. And so finally, I want to believe that this is the will of God for me for my family to be going through this at a time like this. Dan, my son, loved us, the entire family, and especially we, the parents. He loved us so much. He cared for us so much, every detail. And he wanted us to be happy in this life. He wanted to give us the best and he usually would give us the very best. 
Dan, my son, has gone through a lot. And because of that, as you have heard, it's just a brief story that you have heard. I want to confess here that you have been seeing me walking, but I have been like a mother who is dead. I have been in so much pain because of my son Dan. So much pain in this life that I have wondered, surely, Lord, I have really wondered, why it is it that it is my son who is suffering and not me? I have lived my years, but this was just a young man who was just beginning to live, and yet, suddenly, in 2012, he uh, contracts glaucoma, now, and he becomes now visually impaired. In the beginning, it wasn't like this. He was able just to see. He lost his sight partially, but with time, it deteriorated, and finally, it reached a place where he was not able to see well, and, that is, and because of that, because he's human, he was also getting depressed, and that is why someone advised us to take him to the Kenya Institute for the Blind, which is here in South Sea, so that the, he can go through rehabilitation and learn to cope with his condition. So you can imagine a mother seeing her son suddenly, suffering like that. Yet this is a son that always wanted to help. In my house, they all work, my children. In fact, they never want me to, to do anything. So Dan, if there is, uh, like for example, to sweep the house, he would sweep it. If there are dishes to clean, Dan would do it, just like the sisters. And so now suddenly he, he becomes incapacitated, he cannot do that, and that also used to depress him. That's to see that now I am forced to do what he would normally do for me as the mother. Dan loved us and he loved the sisters so much. So I have been a mother who has lived in a lot of pain seeing my son suffering like that. Now, the worst now came just recently. And this is why, church, I would like you to pray for me. For me, I will not pretend. As you see me, I am in deep grief. I am grieving. And let nobody say, just be strong, because I am grieving. Remember, my son just passed on Sunday. This is just the third day since I, this thing happened. And why I am grieving is because of what he went through. This uh, man never used to go to hospital. Even when he was working with KQ, he had medical cover, and he, he was just healthy. He would never go. I mean, there was no day that he was admitted in any hospital. This is the first time. And this is the time that he was admitted, and his situation continued to deteriorate until now he has passed on. Why I am grieving is because I saw it all. And let me tell you, I don't sleep. Please pray for me to sleep. Why? Because I keep on reliving what I saw my son going through. You have been told that he's a fighter. Daniel fought even in the hospital bed. And in fact, it's me who would sometimes tell people when they come to visit him that he's not well. But him he would say that he's okay, he's well. Even the doctors loved him. And he knew, he was a, a historian. By, by the auntie said that he likes things, he, he remembers things. Yes, that was done. He knew the names of the nurses, the names of the doctors, and those uh, other hospital staff that used to attend to him. And so, what makes me sad is to just relieve what Dan was going through. For example, my worst is the day he made the last call to me. And actually, I am the one he made the last call. The, the last day I talked to my son, Daniel, it was on 14th of this month. We had just been there. We had just gone to see him. That day is the first time that Dan actually would confess that, like, things were not right for him. Because it was early in the morning. We went and found him in, in the bed, struggling to breathe. And he told me, Mommy, he used to call me Mommy. Yes, I had heard, uh, he said he had had 
a peaceful night, he slept well, but since morning, because you know we would, the hospital would just allow us there an uh, HDU at 11, so the whole morning we were not allowed in until 11. So at 11 he told me that, uh, Mami, I am having difficulty breathing. I have not had a, a good morning. And in fact, the sister was there, Linda, and they are very close. He told us, today, you, Linda, don't talk to me much. And you, mommy, don't talk to me. So that day, his situation continued to deteriorate. And really, the doctors tried their best. They changed the nebulizer. They changed what they now started putting those pipes while he's there at the HDU place. And it continued, and it continued, and by the time we left, he was now not talking. And around 11, we were called. And we just knew. This is now like the worst. Has, in fact, that time I thought the worst had come. So we were called that now we had to go to the hospital, Aga Khan Hospital, and sign forms because uh, they have tried uh, and, uh, all sorts of things, and Dan cannot breathe any, uh, anymore properly, so they have to take him to ICU. And then the doctor uh, called me. Uh, Dan is the one who told the, gave the doctor his telephone number to call me. So he, after the doctor had explained to me why we need to go uh, urgently to the hospital, now uh, uh, the doctor told me to also talk to him. He was still talking. Actually, that was the last time Dan talked. This other, mm -mm. So I just told him, Dan, yes, the doctor says you are now being taken to. I see you, but just take heart, my son. God is in control. We are praying for you. And he kept on responding, yes, yes, amen. And that was the last time. Because once they took him now to ICU, we never talked again. And that is what really makes me grieve. And why I also grieve, even pastors would excuse me, uh, this time I just asked the Lord, whose prayers do you answer, Lord? We are your children. And you said uh, healing is the children's bread. This Dan, people prayed for. Many people prayed for this Daniel. Here in Kenya and even abroad. Pastors, Pastor Mary, my, my friend Dorothy was here. People prayed for my son. Pastors prayed for my son. Christians, believers prayed for my son. And for, for some strange reason, the one thing that they were asking the Lord, that Lord, let this be a testimony. Dan will be healed, so that will be, this will be a testimony of your healing grace, of your mercies, of your healing power, just to glorify your name. I, no one would be told, but that is how they were asking the Lord, that Dan be healed so that the name of the Lord be glorified. And that has always been my prayer. At Dan be healed so that his name, the Lord's name be glorified. And so when uh, now we were called that day, it was hard. I went with my children. Uh, the dad, for some strange reason, he was here in Nairobi, and that is the day he had just gone home because we had some issue at home, and he had to go home urgently fast. So I went with my two girls, and uh, Dan was taken to ICU, and he stayed there, and he's still there, he fought the battle, but now he had all those pipes. Uh, my child suffered, that is the, what I am feeling so bad when I re collect and relieve. The, the neck, the, the everything, the, the legs, everywhere. He had some pipe, what? You know, it was terrible. It was a terrible sight to look at. But... I just want to thank God that he allowed this. I want to thank all those who prayed for my son. And uh, that is why you see that we are all devastated because we really did not expect Dan to pass on. Because while he was in HDU, there is a time he had actually recovered. You know when he was there, he could not even sit down. Dan had so many complications. Remember you have been told the lungs bleeding, the, the kidney collapsed, he had ulcer, out of nowhere, demonic, that's what I think. The legs, he has died without, he's not able to stand, he was not now able to stand or walk. You know, everything like it is, the blood, yeah, there was everything terrible happening. And so, when it finally happened, we just, we, we just wondered, why Lord? 
whose prayers do you answer? And yet your children have prayed and have fasted, and you have allowed this to happen. But I will encourage myself like David did in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, be part in the Lord, because there's nothing I can do, and the Lord knows why he has allowed this to happen to my son, but I would like you to pray for me, brethren, that the Lord may help me to find peace. I, I don't know about my children. I know they are also touch my husband, but me, I'm talking for myself because I am in deep agony. I cannot sleep even to eat is hard because these things have just happened. And my son, we loved one another. In fact, we share birthday month. I was born in September, so was he. So we had many things in common. So I want to thank the pastors. I want to thank uh, the senior pastor of this church for being here with us. I want to thank the, the, the deputy bishop, Reverend Mugambi also, who has also been a, our family friend. I want to thank uh, Reverend Elias. I want to thank Pastor Cole. I want to thank Elder George Ambai who has been there for us to pray with us even in the hospital. And uh, just your presence, this just encourages us. When I was still here, I remember uh, former Bishop David Oginde would really talk much about the Ministry of Presence. Yes, we need these resources because Dan had to be treated, but the Ministry of Presence is so important. So when I see you have come, because this thing was just at a very short notice, I, even I, I don't know how senior pastor even accepted because it was just yesterday in the afternoon, out of just sudden that now we have to come because we will need to travel home tomorrow. So I just want to thank the church for accepting even uh, to conduct this service and for you to come just at a short notice and just to minister with us, uh, for us, uh, with your presence here. May the Lord bless you all. Amen. I think to a large extent, my wife Judith, the mother of Dan, has said it all. You know she's a, a teacher or a lecturer by profession. And me, I'm a salesperson by profession. So I, my words are very few compared to hers. But this time she was speaking the truth about Dan. Speaking the truth because she loves to speak the truth. Um, I've heard past, uh, Brother Sadok say that, that Dan was a cool and collected gentleman. That is true to a very large extent. But there was a time when some, some robbers, some robbers attacked his mother on, on her way to, to work in the morning. And then they, they, they twisted her, her, her arm and took away the handbag with her phone and Bible inside. Dan felt very bad, very, very bad. He was enraged because he loved his mother a lot. So the following day or a few days later, they caught a thief. Some people caught a thief around our estate. So Dan realized, could be this one is the one who, who attacked my mother. He, Dan went and jumped on that man. The one who is being said is cool and collected. <laughs> they beat him up because he was so enraged that his own mother had undergone that kind of treatment uh, uh, in the hands of rob these small thugs, these robbers. Anyway, gen generally, Dan was a gentleman just like the father. <laughs> Up here, I want to appreciate you, all of you. I want to start by appreciating the senior pastor who has been my friend. She knows why we are friends. I mean, he knows why we are friends. Even the wife is a friend to my, my wife. Then I also want to uh, appreciate the Deputy Bishop, Reverend Mugambi, who is also a family friend, together with his wife, Lois. 
I also want to appreciate uh, Reverend Elias together with his wife. Again, those are family friends. And Brother George here, Elder George, not Brother George. I have to give honor where, I go, where honor is due. Is, is somebody who knows me a bit intimately. There are, th there, are, there are visitations we have done together with him and he understands. So I, pre I appreciate even Pastor. By the way, your name is very interesting. Did you know that? Yes. Call. Yes. Precious call. Yes. Are you really precious? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Thank you. We thank God for you. Because even that name alone should make you precious even if you are not precious. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't want to preach. <laughs> I want to take this opportunity also to thank a number of groups because I know that once I have left this podium, I will not be called back. I want to thank the many groups that were, have stood with us in prayer. One of them is Lemdoluo. Is there anybody from Lemdoluo here? Please stand up and just wave. Lemdoluo, whether you are from uh, the, the branch south or from the major one. Just stand up and wave. One as few as Anna. Is there anyone from Gerwok? Gerwok Development? Hallelujah. Yes, there, there are people from Gerwok there. Those are groups that have prayed with us and stood with us. Is there anyone from uh, Peace? Peace, Peace, Peace Africa? Hallelujah. Yes, I can see Reverend David Obuki here and uh, Rosemary and, uh, and the team. We say thank you. Is there anyone else from another place which I have not mentioned apart from Ushahidi? Ushahidi is the group that um, my, rod, my daughter Rhoda works with and they were kind enough to be able to accept, to ensure done. And it has made our work easier. I want to appreciate them. Please just appreciate them for me. Yes. I also want to appreciate KIB. Brother Omusula, the Lord bless you. I know there's Brother George Musioka, there's uh, the, the principal, Anne Masia, who was not able to come. Please pass our very uh, uh, much love to them because they assured me that they are with me, they are with us, even as we went through this case of Dan. Assure them for us. And now the safari groups that have prayed with us. Even Jem, hallelujah. Where's Jem? I am a Jemian. Most of these guys are Jem. Jem, just wave. Thank you. Thank you for standing with us in prayer and in financial support. All these people have stood with us in prayer and, and financial support. And I want to say thank you. Name yourself. The safari group, Brother Radok. Thank you. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for praying with us. And thank you for supporting us also financially. I think I've done. She said a lot. So I, she did it on my behalf. So, Pastors, the Lord be with you. We are in a place called Sirembe. Behind the behind. <laughs> As uh, De, uh, Bishop David Oginde used to say that a bokeh is <laughs> By the way, I thank, I thank uh, Sister Nancy. Where are you? Hallelujah. You are there. Yesterday, B Bishop David Oginde spoke to me. A lot of words of encouragement on behalf of me and my wife and family. Please pass our love to him. Bishop, the, uh, Bishop Emeritus uh, Adoyo also spoke to me. A lot of words of encouragement. Please pass our love to, to them, just in case you see them. Buona Sifiesana. Hallelujah. Why don't we give God the, a clap? I finish with uh, Job chapter 42, verse 5. Where Job, Job, was, uh, Job asked uh, God a lot of questions. Then when God realized that Job was just flesh and blood, 
God started asking Job even more serious questions. At the end of it all, this is how Job summed it up. I've heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. I've also heard of God by the hearing of my ear. Over this, my son, my only son, I have heard of God. But today, I have seen God. I have seen God. God is not an uncle. God is not a brother. God is not your grandfather. Neither is he my grandfather. God remains God. In every situation, God remains God. And I give him all the glory and honor and praise. Buenas fe sana. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, Pastor. Just to also appreciate, uh, he forgot that I, I am a lady and I have my lady friends here, sisters in the Lord, especially from Holy Communion, Holy Communion. Communion Ministry. Please raise your Sorry, hand. Sorry, I forgot. Yes. <laughs> yeah, many are here. That yeah. was my favorite ministry that I served in for a long time and some WM and because of WN, we had our leader, Rachel Wang, and we, there's a group that, we, even though we scattered in some other groups, but we remained uh, together, we are called Sisterhood. Maybe they are also here. I, I thank you for coming. And I also thank uh, all my relatives. They have uh, been very close to us. So may the Lord bless you all. Forgive me if I did not mention your name, but I just thank all of you because of coming. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we truly appreciate. Can you see the evidence of God's grace? This is why the Bible says we don't mourn like those in the world. And God, the Father of all comfort, will continue to cover your heart, Mom. And we are praying with you. Amen. We would like to transit our program to really the last bit of it so that we can finish. Uh, we'll be inviting us to um, give our offering, and as is our custom, here in Sitam, we everything that we collect in this service goes to the family to help them meet any financial need in this season. So I want to request us to give generously and cheerfully and stand in support of the family in this particular way. If you are giving through M-Pesa, the number is appearing on your screen and the name that should reflect is Rhoda Omenya. Uh, our ushers will also be waiting on us for those that want to give um, um, cash money and I will just ask them to run up here so that we can begin and as we do that the music team will lead us through one song and then we will be inviting our, our pastor to share a devotion as we bring our service to an end. Let's pray. Lord we thank you for the needs in this season and we are grateful that you have made us able to stand with the family through that which we will give today we ask that lord it shall surpass expectation and every financial need around the family in this season shall be met according to your riches in glory this we ask in jesus name amen I'm praising God, the upward 
and that's the prayer of our hearts in Jesus name Amen. Help me appreciate our music team as I allow them to retreat. Thank you. We are privileged this afternoon to have our deputy bishop here with us. And I'm going to invite him to, before making a prayer for the speaker of the word, to just share his condolence to the family and speak to us. And then we will be hearing God's word after that. The Lord richly bless you. Please help me make welcome to the podium, Reverend Justice. Mugambi, our Deputy Bishop. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. My name is Justice Mugambi. And uh, by the grace of God, the Deputy Bishop, we had planned last week with the Bishop, Callisto Dede, that you would be in Gong today because we lost one of our teachers suddenly in Gong. So there's another funeral service taking place there. So we were actually supposed to go there with many people from head office. But then when Harold called me yesterday, we had to rearrange so that Bishop is the one in Gong and I'm here today. Just talked to him this morning and he passes his condolences to this family uh, to know that you would have wanted to be here, but the circumstances cannot allow. So on behalf of SITAM I do, and my own family, I would want to say pole to the Omenias. Really, all of us know our held Omenia for many, many years. He has served the Lord faithfully, together with his wife and his family. And all we can tell you is, as you know, as I told you again, these are the, this is what we know, this is our ministry as elders, pastors. But when it comes to us, we go through what the people we encourage go through. Hearing mom talk, that is real. That is being real. Because we are human beings that we go through a lot of uh, difficult times that we get hurt like anybody else. Even pastors, when, when I lost my mom, I lost my dad, you know, you don't choose to cry. It is normal. You all don't, don't know you are crying or not because you are a human being. Even Jesus, you know, really when his very close friend Lazarus died, the Bible doesn't give us details, but it tells us that Jesus wept. Why? That is the human part of him. So it's okay to grieve. It is okay to cry. Or I can let you know, brothers and sisters, and this family, and you know, is that the God of the mountain is also the God of the valley. We may not understand how tomorrow will look like. We may never even understand why God allowed this to come. But as his children, it's always to, to surrender to the Lord. You remember Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane seeing things were thick, finding it very difficult to, to face the cross and death. He said, not my will, but your will be done. I pray that in this season, we can allow God to be God. He will bring healing. We do not know how, but he promises he will. Praise the name of the Lord. And for all of us, it's really to remind ourselves, when God allows these very difficult circumstances to come to us, is to rem one of the reasons is to remind us that this world is not our home. We are passers-by. Whatever we need to do for the Lord, let's do it quickly. Hallelujah. Let's get active. Let's, get, let, let's, let's do what we must do where it is day. Because we don't know when and how it will come to us. Because for sure it will come. And therefore may the Lord help us to live, when, to live consciously to be alert in all situations. Hallelujah. 
So for the Omenia's family and the girls, the parents, may the Lord comfort you. You have comforted many people. May he use that comfort to comfort you as well. And you can be sure we are praying for you. And our God will not leave you. Not for a moment. He will not forsake you. He is in control. Hallelujah. I do want us to pray as we bring the speaker for today, Pastor Elias Geduka, who is our head of missions, as he comes to bring a word of encouragement to the family and to all of us. Shall we pray? Once again, Lord, even before the creation of the world, you knew we would be here today. Lord, because you are not limited, from everlasting to everlasting, you are in total control. And so, Lord, this afternoon, we surrender to you once again. We have heard you speak through your people. And Lord, we still affirm, even in this difficult situation, that you are the Lord. You are sovereign. And Lord, as we sit at your feet to listen to the word you have put in your servant, Pastor Elias, Lord, may you speak to us. We open our hearts to you. We surrender to you. May your Holy Spirit speak to this family and speak to us also. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, D.B. Mugambi. Buona sifiwe. To the Omenias, our heartfelt condolences. As far as I can remember, I've always known the Omenias in ministry both serving at the assembly level, but also in missions. Your labor in the Lord will never be in vain. And God bless you so very much. And thank you for being so vulnerable to the extent of sharing your feelings. I believe our God is not scared by that. He hears. When I read scripture, I find many who went through that and they expressed it to God but then at the end of the day they still ended up with a conclusion like our mom did even then I will praise the Lord Psalm 77 is an excellent example where the psalmist talks like our mom spoke I can't sleep I tried to sleep I can't it was so difficult that whatever he had gone through caused him a lot of pain and grief. But then in verse 10 of Psalm 77, he says, having asked a few questions, has God changed? Has he, has he, or his, his right hand, has it changed to the extent that he can no longer do what we know our God should do? Using my own words. But in verse 10, he answers himself. He says, no. It is my grief that colored the lenses through which I saw God. Hence the reason I thought he had changed. But God had not. And then goes on to recount moments where God proved himself God. The miracles he did to their own people in Israel, crossing the Red Sea and all the miracles that he did. And thereby concludes, I will continue praising the Lord. Why? It is because when you look back and you see what God has done, the moments you've had with him, then you say, I may not understand this situation, but because of how God has dealt with me in the past, I have confidence that he is still the same God and he will carry me through. And therefore, we are praying for you, the Omenians, that the Lord will carry you through. That even though the grief may cause you to see a little differently, God will continue to minister to you to the extent that you have his lenses that you begin to see like he does. Not easy, but God is faithful. Amen. I want to bring us a brief word. 
triumph of Christ over death. Triumph of Christ over death. I am reminded that just the other day we were celebrating Easter. Remembering the death of our Lord Jesus Christ and on the third day there was an empty tomb as evidence and proof that Jesus had triumphed over death. And that's the message I bring to us. Let me read for us Matthew chapter 28. I will be focusing more on verse 6, but for the sake of context, allow me to read verse 1 to 6. Triumph of Christ over death. Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave, and behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his garment as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. And the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen just as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. And our Heavenly Father, as I break this word, I do want to pray that you will minister not only to the Armenians, but to all of us. May we have space for you in our hearts to speak. Encourage us, even in the midst of our tears, to your glory, Lord, and to your honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all the saints say, Amen. Amen. Triumph of Christ over death. Jesus rising from the dead evidenced by the empty tomb, is the reason why we are here today. Otherwise, if he had not raised again, you and I as believers, as Christians, wouldn't be there. But because he rose again and overcame death, we are here today. This was an event that sealed the defeat of Satan and victory over death. And we just want to bless the Lord for that. I just want to share a few facts about death and the resurrection of Christ vis-a-vis -vis where we are today mourning together with the Omenians. And the emphasis here is that the same power that raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we know that one day, and that day is coming, when all of us will stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, when all of us shall appear before that judgment throne, by God's grace that all of us stand before his presence, that same power, if we will have left this earth like Dan has, has we will be raised again by the same power that raised our Lord Jesus Christ. And we shall be together in heaven before our Lord and Maker. Thereby connecting with the loved ones who have run the race. Have completed their race. And they are before the presence of our Father. Yes, like the Bible says, we mourn. But then we mourn like a people of light because we know one day we shall share eternity with God. Number one thing I realized from this portion of scripture, that Jesus was really dead. It was not fake. It was not fake news. So when we talk about Jesus dying and raising again, we are talking about a fact of history. And that God then, who was in charge, superintended over that event, is the same one who will superintend over us appearing before our maker. So Jesus was really dead. 
He was publicly executed before large crowds who were witnesses of what happened. And then there were, of course, government officers who also witnessed the same. The centurion was one of them. The regional governor, or what was commonly called the Pilate, was there. So we have witnesses of the fact that this event really occurred. And the emphasis on this is this, that Jesus truly died, but he also truly rose again. And that gives us confidence that death is not the end. But that when we rest in Christ, we appear before our heavenly father. Paul knew that so very well. That's why he would talk of dying, being game, because it meant appearing before the presence of the Father. So Jesus was not only really dead, but number two, the tomb was empty. The tomb was empty, giving evidence to the fact that Jesus rose again. Jesus was buried in a new tomb that had never been used before, according to Scripture. The tomb was guarded and sealed by the Roman government, and therefore, there is no way anyone could have stolen the body of Christ, as some may want to suggest or propose. But rather, it is there as evidence to the fact that Jesus died, but he also rose again, according to the word of the Lord, evidenced by the empty tomb. It gives us assurance the God who is in charge, what he says, he does. He is a keeper of his covenant. There is none of his promises that go sour or that he does not meet. So Jesus not only died or really died, not only do we have an empty tomb, but Jesus, number three, appeared to many witnesses after resurrection. Adding more to the truth of this story, that Jesus died, he rose again. Yes, when we rest in the Lord, we shall also rise that one day when the Lord comes to take his church. The classic example is that of Thomas the doubter. And this is to help us know that even among the disciples, we had critical minds. A people who could not accept anything just because it is being said all over the place. But they wanted evidence of what had happened. And that's why Jesus comes to Thomas and says, hey, touch. Put your finger here. It is I. It is truly I. What an evidence. Thomas was only acting like the Berean believers who searched scriptures to ascertain the truthfulness of the same. And therefore Jesus dies, he rises again, the tomb is empty, but he then appears to many witnesses after resurrection. But then number four is a critical one. Because there is evidence of changed lives because of Jesus dying and rising again. Changed lives. If you are born again and you are like me, we are witnesses to the fact that yes, Jesus died and rose again. And there was a work to be accomplished for the Father. And hence the reason why we are here today. Consider the disciples who were filled with so much fear after Jesus had died. They were fearful. They were disappointed. But wait until Jesus shows himself to them. And after the Holy Spirit comes upon them, we find a bold group of people witnessing and sharing the gospel. There was truth in what they were witnessing too. When you consider somebody like Paul, a murderer, then called Saul, but by God's power and because of the completed work of Christ, Paul 
was converted. Paul was transformed. And instead of becoming a murderer, through Christ, he became a life giver and brought many to the fold of our Lord Jesus Christ. How about you today? All of you that are here, that are here today. I would pray to God that you've opened your heart to God. Dan has run his race, and we come to stand together with the family. But there is a witness among us that one day, those who have gone before us and they have rested in God, a day is coming that we shall be able to see them. And this is the witness of this scripture. That yes, Jesus came, died, rose again. There is an empty tomb as evidence. But also he appeared to many witnesses after his resurrection. But we are also, all those who are in Christ, are evidence of the fact that when Jesus said on that cross, it is finished. And he had completed the task God had given him. Truly it was done. Because we are here today as witnesses of the same. What am I saying to us, brethren? We have confidence in a great God. A great God who is able to comfort and console the Omenia family. A great God who will give us an opportunity as long as we run the race of faith to see the beloved who have gone before us. We are a people of hope. And I remind us, the same power that raised the Lord Jesus Christ is the same power that will raise us up when the time comes. Jesus is indeed alive. Jesus is indeed alive and still at work. And if there is a, the best gift that you can give today, as we celebrate this life, is to remember that Jesus still invites people to be reconciled with God. So that when that day comes, the same power that raised Jesus will raise you up and you will be together, not only with him, but also with those who have run the race faithfully and get there before we do. I pray to God that nobody will go out of this sanctuary without having reconciled with God, if you haven't. And the cry of my heart today is that all who do not know him today get to know him. But also those that know him, that they may be reminded of the cost of salvation and that we continue running our race. Jesus triumphed over death. As believers, therefore, death simply means to be before the presence of God. And we pray that our son Dan is in the presence of God. And all of us that run the race faithfully, God will take responsibility for raising us up that we can be with him, but also we can be with those that have run the race before us. By those words, may the family be encouraged. May the family receive the comfort of the Lord. May your eyes, just like all of us who are mourning together with them, be colored not with the colors of our grief, but may they be colored with what God puts as the color on our lenses to be able to see him and to see the things of life. In other words, as we see them, we see like he does. Even where we do not understand. May God give us that understanding. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful. Thank you for completing the work on the cross. Thank you for the evidence of the empty tomb.
tomb. Thank you for appearing to many as a witness to the fact. Yes, you had died and you had rose again according to scripture. And we thank you that we are here today. And especially all those that know you as Lord and Savior. We stand today as evidence of the completed work. We know that when you come again, we will be with you. If we will have rested in you, the same power that rose Jesus Christ, Lord, you will raise us up, that we can be together with you and with all those who have run the race and completed it so faithfully. We therefore bless you and thank you. Surround the Omenias with your comfort, with your strength to go through this in their time of weakness and pain. And I want to thank you for the encouragement that you've already given them. They may still have a lot of questions, and it is okay. But Lord, visit with them. May you surround them more than the air around them, that they may know, even then, your presence is with them and goes with them. In Jesus' holy name we pray, and all the saints say amen. 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 Thank you. Please help me appreciate our pastor for that great encouragement. Thank you very much. At this point, we would like to invite the family to just move to the front so that we could uh, make prayer for you. Uh, our deputy bishop will be leading us through that, so if we can have members uh, of the family, we can also have the extended family members just join in. And I'll request us to be upstanding as I also invite our elders, uh, those serving and those that already served uh, previously. Um, if you would just come and any of our pastors in the congregation, uh, let's just surround this family with God's love as our deputy bishop leads us through a prayer. Karibu Bishop. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Precious. I think we can appreciate Pastor Precious. Really doing a good, good job. And I would want to appreciate our, our senior pastor here, Reverend Karita, our former deputy bishop, for the good job of ministering to God's people. I'm sure you have a word to tell God about this family. So as elders, as pastors, as uh, stretch their hands towards this family on our behalf. Please make a prayer. I want to give you a moment just to make a prayer to this family. You have heard Elder Omenia speak. You have heard Mama Dan speak. You have seen the sisters. You have heard the story. Oh, this is a difficult situation to be in. Truly very difficult. We don't know how they will be handling it, even as days come. Uh, but we know God has promised us for renewed strength. God has promised us for comfort. That Him alone can reach where men cannot reach. That when we leave them alone, there in their own room, in their own house, God will be with them as they reflect on how the future will look like, on the life that Dan has lived and the impact, that God, that God will just speak to them. God will all uphold them. Hallelujah. Thank you this afternoon, Lord. All of us saints, all of us believers in you. We raise, we raise our voices before you. Our hearts, Lord, are in your presence and we want to cry to you. Oh God, we ask you, Father, may you touch the Omenia's family. May you touch our elder. May you touch mom. May you touch the sisters. May you touch the relatives who are here and those who are afar. Lord, even those who are at home, those who may not even have heard about this news, May you stretch your hand because you are not limited by time or space. May you touch them wherever they are. Lord, do on, what only you can do. So we pray for a lifting in their lives. We pray for encouragement. We pray for strength. 
we pray oh God that your Holy Spirit will just guide them even as they make decisions from here on we surrender them to you as they ask difficult questions that Lord they may never even have answers we pray that you will understand them we pray that oh God your Holy Spirit will just be with them as you are with Job of old be with them as you have been with men of us here Lord who have lost loved ones, we pray that you be with them. That is the cry of our hearts. Lord, uphold them with your righteous right hand. When they are lonely, you know what to do with them. When they are in tears, you know what to do with them. Lord, we pray even for our mom that you will give us sleep. We don't know how. For her to give him sleep, we don't know how. For the sisters, give them sleep. We don't know how. Oh God, we surrender them to you. And we know, Lord, you are faithful. Your word is true. We can trust you fully that you will do it for them. So we surrender them to you. Even for the preparations for the funeral, we surrender them to you. Let there be wisdom. Lord, bring people their way. Bring some helpers. People who will do this and do the other for this to be successful. Provide for every need, we pray. For you are our provider. Blessed Savior, take over from the beginning to the end. And even after the funeral, take over. As day stands into years, Lord, uphold them be with them. That is our prayer. And thank you that we have a father who is dependable. A father who is trustworthy. Oh, oh Lord, we honor you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's appreciate uh, the family as we allow them to retreat back to their seats.
Brother Sam to just come and give us an appreciation, a vote of thanks. Allow me to say, a uh, few years ago I lost my dad. He was a pastor. And I had the chance of attending his post-mortem. Yes, you may have your seat. I had the privilege of standing in the cold room where the post-mortem was happening. And because um, he died a sudden death, he wasn't sick. He just dropped one morning. They opened up his mind and they opened up his chest. Um, his heart was twice um, the normal heart of a human being. And the doctor said just one sentence. This is a man who was under extreme stress that he didn't know how to handle. And when he said that, I automatically knew where that stress was coming from. It was the church he was pastoring. And in that cold room, with a lot of pain, I took an oath that I will never belong to the church. I will never do anything church-related, because church is the reason I don't have a father. Uh, and a few years later, I'm right inside what he used to do, and doing it with a lot of joy and zeal because we have a God who knows how to heal. And he heals so good, and he binds up the brokenhearted, and I pray for you, mom and dad, that you will receive that healing. And the questions, many that are there, God will answer them. And truly, I stand as a testimony that there is life beyond the storm. And all of us, regardless of what storm is facing us, we must desire to see what's ahead because that's the only way we get to see how good he is. Amen. Brother Sam Karibu. Good afternoon, church again. Praise the Lord. Uh, while we were growing up, because uh, I majorly grew up in my uncle's house, uh, I was very close with Dan. There are two uh, things that I just want to mention before I give my vote or our vote of thanks to you people. We had these neighbors who were very loud. Uh, they really used to disturb my cousins, uh, Linda and Rhoda. So one day, Dan told me, Sam, this guy cannot be disturbing us and we are boys. So he looked for a black, a dress. He wrapped it on his head. He went behind their house and really beat them up. Then ran back to the front and he was there. We were passing our poles to them for what had happened behind their house. He did not joke with family. Uh, secondly, uh, my auntie and Dan and I we really used to love watching football, especially the World Cup. If you say the word wabe, it has a different meaning between me, my aunt, and dad. So we would be closed in a room laughing. But apparently, Dan would not do that with anybody else. So my aunt would ask always, what is this that you guys talk about that makes you laugh, but again, no one else knows what you're laughing about? It was a special relationship we had with Dan. Thank you. I, at this point, I would uh, like to first and foremost thank SITAM, the pastoral team, beginning with our deputy bishop, senior pastor, and the entire pastoral team for allowing us to be here this afternoon to memorize the life of Dan. Thank you so much for your grace and support. We'd also like to thank the music team for helping to sing with us and encouraging us through music and song. Thank you. I would also like to thank the Aga Khan Hospital. From the moment uh, Dan was admitted to the last time uh, they looked after him, the doctors, the nurses, and all the workers there that were able to attend to Dan. Thank you so much, Aga Khan Hospital. Thirdly, I would like to thank a very special family, the Agais family, 
a senior education educationist who uh, introduced Dan to KIB and uh, the wife, that is Grace, who was able to even walk with us when Dan was sick. She uh, honored us with her daily visit to the hospital and she was feeding Dan even while Dan was admitted at the hospital. So thank you so much, uh, dear guys. We really appreciate your support. May God bless you abundantly. Uh, fifthly, I would like to thank the Kenya Institute of the Blind for working with Dan in the most challenging of moments of his life. As you've been told, Dan was a jovial person. He went around his work and daily life without any support. But as uh, you've heard, he had to now learn to do things differently. And we want to thank the Kenya Institute of, for the Blind for enabling uh, this to happen in those challenging uh, times. Thank you, KIB uh, Fraternity. I would also like to thank uh, the planning committee, those of us who are here. We are grateful for the support you've uh, given us so far in planning the logistics. We continue to pray that God gives you strength even as we plan the days ahead. Uh, to be able to give our dear Dan a befitting send-off. Kindly continue to pray with us as a family. It is not an easy time for us, and we call for your continuous prayers. Lastly, I would like to thank each and every one of you for sparing your time to come and grace us with your presence here today. We do not take it for granted that some of you left their places of work and other duties to come and stand with us this afternoon. May God richly bless you. Thank you so much. And uh, at this point, I would like to just to mention that uh, we had to have this uh, service today because our parents are traveling back home tomorrow to help with the other arrangements in the village. And therefore, we had this uh, happen today. And even with a short notice, you have been able to attend. Uh, thank you for that. We continue to ask for your prayers and support. May God uh, give you that strength as you stand with us. Finally, Dan will be laid to rest on the 26th of April in a village called Sirembe. It's in Game Constituency, Sierra County. May God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Sam. Uh, we have come to the end of our time together, um, and we would like to ask the pastors to come and help lead the family out on our recession. Once again, on behalf of all of us at Sitam Valley Road, thank you for spending this afternoon with us. And also on behalf of the family, thank you for coming to encourage them. Um, the family will be seated outside to the right, um, and you are all welcome to pass by and share your encouragement together with them, and the Lord will richly bless us. Let me ask us to stand so that we could share the words of grace together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Sehemu yangu, Rafiki yangu.